Hey Anna, I've got David on the table. We're going to do your surrogate balance now, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's see how we go. So I'm going to just scan through and chart the all your information and we'll just see where your body wants to start. Yet? I already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I already I did. I yep. <laughs> okay. So now let's go have a look. So where do we need to kick in? Okay. So try to run down. Thyroid hormones, adrenal exhaustion. Yeah, which makes sense, you know, with that whole combination within the triple heater meridian. So if your adrenals are, anyway, so we'll see what your adrenals are doing firstly. Which will be fun. This is all part of what you'll be learning in Kinesi Foundations. And hold up for me. Yeah, okay. Really and hold up for me. Yeah. So that says, yep, your adrenals are just switched on all the time. So now let's see. Let's see. Let's see where they're at. Hold. That one's okay. That's survival switching. Hold. That one's okay. That's deep survival. Hold. That's not happy, that's hidden deep survival. So your unconscious brain has gone, okay, I know my adrenals are overworking and they're probably exhausted, but don't worry about it, we'll be fine. Okay, so where do we need to go next? So do I need to do the deep hidden survival stuff first? Is that the biggest priority? Okay, so let's go do that first. And in there, we'll find out which organs are linked in with this exhaustion. Okay, so for a start, we need to pop in the sensory overload. So it's when, you know, your brain gets so exhausted that it doesn't matter whether it's stuff you see, stuff you hear, stuff you feel, your body goes, it's all too much. Too much. Sensory overload. Okay, and then the first little nuclei we've got to go into is your anterior cingulate gyrus. And hold out for me. Not really. <laughs> Not happy, Jan. Okay, so that one's linking in with an old survival pattern. So we'll just calm the amygdala down there. So the anterior cingulate gyrus always wants you to be perfect under stress. The second little layer is showing up as your reticular activating system. Yeah, right. So serotonin, uh, too much, not enough. Okay, so your serotonin is low. And yeah, we do make like 90, 95% of that in our small intestines, along with a whole bunch of other hormones, of course. Uh, what do we need to cross refer that to? Sacral chakra. So sacral chakra, of course, does feed your reproductive organs. So the low serotonin's linking in with your sacral chakra. And sacral is, of course, about creating the world you want. So it's about creation. But definitely feed, feeds the gonads and the reproductive system. Okay. Still something else in there in the periventricular survival system. So there's another RAS circuit we need. Okay, 
So this one's noradrenaline, so the excess, you know, so your uh, adrenals assuming that life is going to be stressful forever. And that one is creating vigilance in the nervous system so that the nervous system, your adrenals, are constantly on the lookout for the next thing to go wrong. And you can imagine because, um, especially as women, our hormones have a real specific hierarchy and number one hierarchy is keeping ourselves and our children safe and secure. So if our nervous system is on the lookout for what's going on wrong and is feeling that there's something, you know, it's feeling it through the tendrils, then it will turn all the other hormonal systems down in order to keep that vigilance, you know, up and running. anything else in the PVSS let's go have a look it's looking pretty good now that part of it yep uh, actually you mentioned the right side of your body was it or the left right side okay so let me just because the reticular activating system can also be linked in with uh, muscle tension and tightness so I might just uh, David I'm mm -hmm. going to get you to tighten your right leg, mm -hmm. tight, 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 <clears throat> and relax. Tighten your right butt, your glute, and relax. Mm -hmm. Tighten the right side of your body, just tight, 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 and relax. Mm -hmm. Tighten your right shoulder, and relax, mm -hmm. and tighten your right arm, and relax. This reticular activating system can also control tension going on around the it's body. It's on the right hand side. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, right side seems to struggle. More tension and pain, thickening of the tissues. Interesting. And then when I'm checking the reticular activating system, the serotonin isn't showing up as being a problem on the left, but it is on the right, which is just interesting. You know, so that um, may or may not. Um, there's vigilance. So the right and right. So let's um, let's go check out your gates, Anna, just out of curiosity. Okay, hold, hold, and hold, and hold. Okay, so left and left and hold, right and right and hold. Hmm. Okay, right arm, left leg, hold. Interesting. Three. Left arm, right leg. Interesting, yeah. yeah, everything unlocked on the right side, Anna, unless they were individually. So with the gates, there's a re so there's actually something going on for your right side in relation to your body structure from the gait perspective. Like from the hip of the, do you want to measure my arms? Yeah, so let's check the uh, feet. Yeah, so you've got quite a big right gait um, so the right foot's up, maybe an extra inch and a half, two inches above the left. Mm -hmm. Fingers outstretched. Actually, the arm lengths are pretty good. Like half a centimetre. Yeah, it's maybe, yeah, so a quarter of an inch. But uh, definitely the feet are out by yay amount so so from that gait perspective and don't forget the gates are affected by everything going on inside so when energetically physically emotionally spiritually we're out the door our body can have a gate you know so all those muscles inside are internally rotating in order to do what we're unconsciously doing how old are we don't know Interesting. So then with the reticular activating system, that's where we were. So the RAS showed up more so with the serotonin. It was only on the right. Yeah, so there it is again. And again, the vigilance. So lack of serotonin creating vigilance in the body musculature and everything on the right side of the body. Interesting.
Serotonin's released when you exercise, isn't it? Uh, dopamine is released when you exercise. Dopamine, but serotonin is... Oh, uh, well, when you get out in the first sunshine in the morning, it converts uh, melatonin into serotonin, and then, then when the sun goes down, mm -hmm. it's supposed to convert from your serotonin to melatonin. Mm -hmm. So serotonin during the day, melatonin at night. Okay. But when your pineal gland is coated because of either fluoride or glyphosate or... There's four major, oh, electromagnetic radiations. So a few things really coat that pineal gland. And then uh, that really messes with our melatonin and mm. other hormones. Okay, so anything more with the little RAS? Oh, there might be something else there. Okay, so there's still something going on with serotonin. And this one uh, is connected to large intestine 20, and large intestine 20 is, um, well, it's to do with wanting to run away and lock the door and, you know, go into Batman cave. <laughs> yeah. And the, but, that which is flight, right? Yeah, so because the serotonin isn't yeah, making yeah. you feel calm and nurtured and safe and... The two are related. Yeah. Fight. Flight. Yeah, well, certainly the energetics of the structure of the body feel like the body wants to run away. And when you're tired and not feeling great, it's easy to feel like that rather than face humans. Okay, something else going on in the periventricular survival system. So it's not the reticular activating circuit this time. So now we're going into the sympathetic nervous system. So from here, so because the RAS, which is off your rest and digest circuitry, uh, it's sort of, we need to go find out for a start, we'll amygdalaize it. And then we'll go find out which organs it's affecting. So this will be where we find out, you know, so whether menopause is connected or whether insulin resistance is important or whether the brain, you know. So anyway, we'll delve through here to see what other organs are involved in. How are you feeling at the moment? Okay. So, yeah, so central, governing, lung, lung, circ, sex. Okay, so the circulation of the sex organs is showing up. There's two muscles that I use. Hold out for me. That one's good. Hold out for me. Okay, so the right, interesting, right glute medius isn't awesome. Hold up for me. No. Hold up for me. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, the right is. Interesting. Right's definitely weaker. Okay, so that's circ sex. So the circulation of the sex organs isn't awesome at the moment. And by the way, I didn't have the bioresonance uh, last time we did a balance, Anna. So if you ever do want, want one of those, I need a few extra details, but basically... Um, I do four major scans for $159 and for $199 I have a quick little 15-20 minute chat, you know, about the findings of it. But it's got huge amounts of information in there and it takes about an hour to do all of them. So it's, uh, anyway, it's just something that to think about. And again, glute. Good. Holding now. Holding now. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so back to central governing lung, lung, circ sex, heart, stomach, large intestines showing up. So the two muscles I'm going to check for that are the fascial artery muscle side of the legs and the quadratus lumborum on the lower back. Hold up for me. No, that's good. Hold up for me. No, that's good. Did you notice the right one wasn't as strong? 
David. Hold. Oh. Bay. Bay. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Hold on the to. The whole right hand side's like that. Yes, it has been. So hold on to the edges of the table for me. Hold out. Don't let me pull to the right. That one's fine. Hold out. Don't let me pull to the left. Yeah. So the right quadratus lumborum as well. You still doing your push-ups? Not as much. I'm doing yoga though. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. And again, hold. That's better. Feel the difference. Just feel mm. stronger. Okay, hold on to the edges of the table again. And hold out, pulling to the left. So because large intestine shows up, you know, I know you've got the question in there in relation to your gut, so we will go and check out things like candida fungus. Parasites, bacteria, yada, yada, yada. Mm. So let's again, losing through. Right, so small intestines is showing up as well. So we use quadriceps for small intestines. Hold up for me. No. Hold up for me. And, oh, again, right side only. I keep forgetting that. So now I'm going to get you to sit up. We'll do a weird one. So knees bent on the table. Okay. Yep. Then arms crossed. I can't do that. Leaning back. <laughs> Leaning back. <no. laughs> chin up, chin up, and hold up for me. Seriously? <laughs> it's so much fun, isn't it? No, just relax. No, I don't think I could hold. Yeah, so small intestine energy. And the small intestine is really undervalued, you know, because it's where 90% of our immunity is. It's where we make a huge amount of our hormones. There's a huge amount of uh, detoxification that happens in there. You know, it takes on everything from the liver, gallbladder, pancreas. You know, so it's pretty important, our poor little small intestines. Eat more cabbage. Eat more cabbage. Cabbage is king. Do you remember seeing that Jamie Oliver show about 10 years ago? They were showing little kids over in the UK vegetables and a lot of the kids had never seen a mm. tomato or a potato. Mm. Quite bizarre. They only knew about potato gems. It's probably worse these days. Hold up. You know, that's... I do remember that, actually. Yeah, that highly refined processed stuff is getting worse. So sitting up for me, <clears throat> knees bent, arms crossed, leaning back, leaning back. I don't know how you can call this a hold. And hold up. I can't help. See? <laughs> no faith, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah and amen, you know the drill. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? I did that one on a bunch of the aunts one night at a party. Right. Because we were talking about um, birth and how it messes with a whole bunch of our our organs. So we were at, I, I was over at Rose's place and I I don't I can't remember which or, or which aunts, but you know a bunch of them. Anyway, so liver is showing up next, Anna. So there is, you know, there's a bit going on. So if you think about the fact that the periventricular survival system and the deep hidden survival pattern in that, that's making your adrenals, which are, you know, they're really overworking. So then that's affecting all of these other systems. So let's see where your liver's at with it. Hold, I'm going back. That one's fine. Relax. Hold up. I'm going down. That's good. It's not either of those. Hold, I'm going back, and hold up, I'm going down. Ah, So none of them were bad, like overall your liver's overworking more than anything, but the only one that had a slight unlock was the second one on the left, which is to do with fibrinogen, which is a clotting agent. Mm. Which is about fear. So your body releases fibrinogen when it thinks it's about to be attacked or shot or something. So it makes a clotting agent deliberately so you don't bleed out and die, which is very clear, it's, yeah, um, clever. It's very clever. Which could be affecting blood flow. Yeah. Any, and this is in the liver too. Mm. And it's usually because the liver's so overloaded 
Liver on the right hand side. Yeah, the liver's so overloaded that, um, you know, everything can upset that. In fact, I might. But also adrenal, adrenal over exhaustion and fatigue. Yeah. And the other problem is adrenal laden memories. The memory, the thinking, the, they lay down adrenal memories. Yeah. Too fast. Yeah, I was listening to someone the other day talking about full body memories. And when people are going through some types of therapy, they, they can feel whatever trauma it was through their entire mm. cellular health. And I do have some clients who shake on the table and they don't know what it is. They just know that they're releasing some energy. Mm. Mm. Better out than in, I always say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, thyroid and immune system didn't show up specifically, so I'm going to go check them individually. So let's go and check the immune system. And hold. Yeah. Hold. 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 Okay. So three out of five of the immune system challenges are unlocking. So we'll pick those up. There's an energy mismatch to something going on in your body. So something your body isn't recognizing. So now, uh, so we had a little bit of an unlock with the immune. None of them were really bad, but I suspect there'll be something there when we ask more specifically down the track. They're all holding now. They're now all holding, and now we'll check your thyroid. Good old W arms. Hold back. I'm lifting. Mm -hmm. Hold. Yep, rock okay. solid. And hold back. Okay. Minus all your supplements, minus any medications. Minus all your supplements, minus any medications. And hold back. Hold back. Okay, so at a base level, the thyroid's not doing too bad, which is, which is cool. Okay, let me just have a quick note as to which organs showed up for you. So it was under for the small intestine. Your adrenals were over. You had a couple of unders with the immune system. The sex was a bit underworking. Spleen, stomach, lung, large intestine. We had some stuff going on on the right. Kidneys, bladder, liver. We had the fibrinogen. Okay. Now let's go through them and make sure. What's the fibrinogen? That's the sticky substance that the liver releases. So when I do live blood, I'll show you some pictures afterwards. Uh, but when I do live blood, it's like, it looks like sharp spider web. Oh. And the faster you see the clotting happens, you can see the damage that it, um, that it does to the cells around it. So instead of being nice and round with your little red blood cells, it's like the fibrinogen pokes into the red blood cells and makes them look like clouds. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine if that's happening all the time, your cell membranes, it ends up creating these clots with the red blood cell. It just, you know, messes with things. Mm -hmm. There's still something going on with you, your triple heater meridian, which is that combination of immune thyroid adrenals. So uh, let's go in and have a bit of a play with that now. So do I need to do something more with the adrenals? Not at this point. Do I need to do something more with the immune system? Yes, I do. So I'll go through your list and then I'll just whack in anything else I can think of. So... Okay, so let's just ask in relation to stress and stress hormones. And hold. Yeah, okay. Hold. Mm. Hold. Mm. They want to hold. hold. They're almost holding. hold. They're almost, but yeah. So the stress and stress hormones is messing with your immune system.
stress and stress hormones and how 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 about how, how awesome let's check pain and pain hormones mm. how 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 no what does that mean well, it means that the immune system's okay with pain. It's not affecting the immune system, but stress is. Mm -hmm. Let's check if there's, um, say, parasites and parasitic particles. Parasites and parasitic particles, synthetic parasites, natural parasites, bastardized parasites. And hold. 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 Not really. Um, that one's holding. Um, yeah. They're trying. There's some energy in there, but there's definitely a couple of them that don't have. So it's maybe stress. Well, this is parasites. Yeah. So parasites will exhaust your adrenals, and sometimes parasites look in the body to doctors as things other than what they are. So if we have something like. Um, cysts or growths and the doctor will nearly always assume that it's cholesterol or cancer whereas it can often be cysts of parasites which can drain your energy by the way because parasites in the intestines can eat your neurotransmitters mm. it's like eating your brain well they get in there too <laughs> bacteria and bacterial particles particles are they bacteria it's the parasite no no they're separate a little bacteria and bacterial animals. particles and uh, any and all synthetic bacteria we'll just whack them all in there hold hold because you know what they're doing with genetic modification of food is genetically modifying all sorts of bacteria and things and putting them in the foods to change the way foods age and all sorts of things. So they're doing delightful stuff with our food. So that's part of the food. processing. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah. it's not healthy for humans in uh -huh. any way, shape or form. Processed foods are good if you do the process just while you cook again. Ah, yeah, go on. Yeah, the process is the cooking. Exactly. But yeah, buying things with 17 ingredients when you can't even, you know, recognize them, not great. Um. Okay, so let's check, say, candida and candida particles. Mm. And hold. 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 Mm. How that show up? No, about four out of five. What's that mean, the probiotic? Candida is not an easy, and it can't, probiotics don't really fix candida. You've got to get in there and kill. Mm. And every time we have an acidic, sweet, sugary environment, it feeds candida and mm. fungus and bad bacteria like SIBO. So small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that's where the FODMAPs come in as well. So, because FODMAPs are the fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, and polyols, which are all carbohydrates that are in foods that feed SIBO. And generally they feed fungus and candida in there as well. What's SIBO? A small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Oh. Uh, let's check for fungus and fungal spores. Same but different to candida, you know, so there's some other things in there besides the candida. Oh, mm. One of my guys last night, yeah, he's been in pain for years and years and years. And it wasn't until he went on a drug, which is an antifungal, that he got some pain relief. And he's had like 10 out of 10 in pain for years and years. And so now he, after, and he's been working on his health a long time. 
but now he's of the opinion that the fungus is causing all of the problems in his body, which may or may not be true. So, uh, but the drug that he uses as the antifungal has some really nasty side effects. So he'd be better off with something like, you know, say ivermectin or something that's more a more simple molecule with less side effects and some herbal stuff to really, you know, get in there and clean up that gut. But it can take two years. It's not a quick fix, you know, getting fungus and candida out of the gut. It can be a two-year process because it can be so systemic. It can be under layers and layers and layers and layers of biofilm and mucoid plaque. So that takes time to break down. And the best things to break them down are things like herbs and essential oils. You know, so they're... they're fasting. Uh, well, fasting won't break down the biofilm. Well, if fasting you're herbs on top of it while you're fasting. Yeah, but some herbs don't like an empty stomach. Oh, do they? they can make you feel sick. So it depends on the herbs and depending on your constitution okay. as to what you can cope with. Every individual. Yes, but a lot of the but when we're killing, you can imagine you're killing stuff that mm. can create three times the inflammation in there. Right. Actually, up to thirty times. Right. So if you have a nice little parasite or a worm or something like that, and you break, you kill it you can create 30 times the inflammation of the buggers up, you know, right. when you, yeah, because you're creating a huge amount of lipopolysaccharides, which are inflammatory and they cause leaky gut and all sorts of things. Mm. So that's why, you know, it's not so easy to just go, let's take cat's claw. Mm. You know, that'll kill the parasites in candida. Yeah, it might, but what are you going to do about the leaky gut and the inflammation and the, you know, the other stuff going on? What's cat's claw? Why is that good? Oh, it's just another herb for parasites and things. Yeah, it's for candida parasites. Yeah, it's a really nice herb. It's also good for the brain, but a lot of things are because so many of these bugs can get across the brain. Mm. So what people feel is that their brain feels more alive and alert, but it's because they've got funguses and candida and parasites out of their brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've changed. That. And that gut-brain connection as well. So when your gut is dysfunctional, <sighs> then your poor little brain isn't going to be feeling switched on and happy, ha happy. Um, and there's neuroreceptors around the gut too. Oh, everywhere, mm. absolutely. So the brain's in your stomach. Yes, but the answer was, yes, there's parasites, bacteria, and candida and fungus in there, Anna. So there is a bit of everything, unfortunately. So... Now that I've got all of those immune system things, oh, actually, let me ask. Is there, I, I'm going to, um, I'm going to check a few other things that I know are everywhere anyway. So just to sort of see as well. So let's check the, actually, you've got a good list for your homeopathics over here that I might use. Like I was thinking, yeah, for example, any and all glyphosate. And hold because as we know it's ubiquitous and even if we're eating organic we can still be breathing it in it's just like this because what they first use it as what is it was it as an antibiotic or something like yeah it's an antibiotic yeah so you know it's designed it's anti-life <coughs> antibiotic no. means anti-life no they're using it for something else what was that Anyway, but when they were doing that experiment, they threw the byproduct on the ground and they noticed it killed all the plants. Yep. Just when they were using it for this other thing. Because they use that to stop fungus. So it'll be an antifungal or something. Yeah, but unfortunately, a lot of antifungals allow other things to grow, mm. you know, so especially chemicals that are just so nasty you know quite often they allow something else to really thrive in the background mm. oh interesting so you've got um ruacetate on there anna so i'm assuming you must have taken that when you're a teenager or something That's a big list of... And uh, here in Australia... Hmm? She nodded off. So here in Australia, you have to be having regular liver and kidney tests all the time on Roaccutane because they know that it does things like 
shrinks our ovaries to pinheads in some people and shrinks the testicles and like it just does some really nasty stuff so that's really interesting and if you haven't taken it and maybe your mum did or something like that these things some of these drugs can really mess with enzyme and system enzyme pathways in the body so that you know it creates an issue downstream as well to our children and our children's children I don't even know what this one is, Anna. Um, the BCG, BCG, BCG in fact, and hold. But I do know that with that some of the, you know, a lot of the information that's come out in the last couple of years through people like Judy Mikovits and uh, people like that, they've talked about how they knew that there was a substance in them called SV, uh, which was the 40th simian virus they found because of the way where they were created, they were using as a substrate. So SV40 was also, um, they got documents from Pfizer, it was also in the Pfizer, the SV, check that as well, just because that seemed to be showing up. So therefore, I'll just go check it in relation to the SV40. And it's basically a nasty virus that can once again be generational. Yeah, right. Not holding at all. Not holding at all. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, Judy Mikovits's books, Plague and Plague of Corruptions, man. You have to take them in breaks. You read a little bit, you get angry, you take a break, you have a glass of wine. You read a little bit, you take a break, you have a glass of wine. <laughs> ah, that's why I haven't been able to maintain my weight over COVID. <laughs> ah, you got to laugh. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to check any and all of the G's. Your 3G, 4G, 5G, 6G's coming. So in relation to any and all EMFs, Wi-Fi's, all the G's. But uh, apparently just recently okay. they've released another 300 um, uh, satellites that are radiation. They do something with radiation. That wasn't too bad, actually. The one was sort of maybe half and half. Maybe two out of five or something, so not too bad. So whatever you're doing seems to be protecting yourself from those. But everything we do is still better than nothing. So whether we're turning our phones onto airplane mode or turning the routers off at night time or, you know, wearing our wearables or whatever it is, it all helps. What's the wearable? Oh, you know, things that uh, basically help to protect you, you know, like my thing. Mm. So it releases negative ions. So all the stuff that we should be doing if our fresh air was fresh air and if our sunshine was good sunshine and if our weather was good weather, being out in the weather, getting grounded, enjoying, you know, that beautiful fresh air, all of that would be a good thing. Let's check any and all antibiotics. And I don't know if it's the same where you are, Anna, but man, we've got some nasty bugs going around. People are just getting sick as and spending weeks in bed and coughing their lungs up. And I'm a fever, I fear. Well, as well as all the influenzas, we're in post, you know, mm. everyone's getting the flu jabs and they're shedding. And they added RSV, I think, to the flu jabs this year. Girl, everyone's got it. All the kids have got it.
So a bit going on there um, in your immune system and your gut, Anna. So with your little homeopathic detox needed for, uh, and I didn't ask homeopathic detox, I was just saying using that. But yeah, so glyphosate, antibiotics, radiation, BCG and Pavaxroacatane. So as well as the SV40. Now, none of that helps in relation to the question with antibiotics because any of that can cross the blood-brain barrier. If we're tired and exhausted and feeling weak, our blood-brain barrier can be not as strong as it should be. So let's just go in and ask a few little questions of your brain and see how it's functioning, just some of the major, major pathways. So left to right, uh, corpus callosum, hold. So the corpus callosum is about a centimetre wide, connects the left and right sides of the brain. And hold. And hold. Okay. Now I'm going to check your anterior commissure. And hold. Now all of this could just be not working because you're so exhausted as well, by the way. It doesn't have to be like a pre Alzheimer's thing, but you can imagine the more pathways you have up and running in relation to uh, preventing Alzheimer's, the better. There's definitely a couple of genes that they believe are connected, but as we know, you know, lifestyle, most of the genes are affected by, uh, it's more like 98% of the genes that are affected are affected by lifestyle. So then we need to think about, okay, well, what can we do in our lifestyle to really help to protect us from the Alzheimer's? And I'm sure you've heard that, hold out, yeah. Alzheimer's is considered third stage diabetes, but sugar is just one of the many things that weakens the blood brain barrier. Uh, actually, we'll ask about the hippocampus. So, the hippocampus, obviously, with dementia and Alzheimer's, the hippocampus is a memory center. It can shrink to about 9% of the size in really badly affected people. But a lot of that is pre. That's after trauma. So the trauma also takes the energy away from your hippocampus because it doesn't want you remembering it. The so adrenaline, it, the adrenaline effect. Through. Yeah, the adrenaline and the cortisol shuts down your short-term memory, and you uh, and it basically keeps you in a state so that you're not remembering the bad stuff. But what that does long-term, we don't then get in there and rehydrate the the hippocampus. So anyway, let's check the hippocampus. And hold out. So yeah, left to right hippocampus weren't real happy. And again, hold, beautiful. Uh, let's just check fear of failure. And hold, okay. So yeah, so fear of failure, it's uh, one of the main things that shuts down the connection between left and right sides of the brain. And the other one is fear of success. And again, hold. No, that one's fine. So that's good. So yeah, so a couple of these little pathways in the brain are already showing up that they're just not as strong as they could be. But obviously the stress you're under could easily, could easily be linking in with all of that. Brain could just be tired.
Okay, so let's have a look at these little thyroid homes for you because your thyroid was actually, bizarrely enough, it's not the one. But, you know, don't forget that when you're taking thyroid hormones, you're not fixing the underlying cause of the thyroid. So what we need in order to make thyroid hormones is things like um, iodine and tyrosine and manganese and magnesium and the B complex and stuff like that. So when we're just giving ourselves a drug to bypass the functionality of the thyroid and getting it up and running and functional, then we're missing, we're missing part of the boat. You know, you need iodine. If you've got thyroid issues, you need iodine. You know, you can't bypass that. Every cell in your body requires iodine. So, you know, the medications are just one part, but we'll check them anyway. Okay. I don't it's good for the large intestine. Is it? Is that right? Okay. I don't know that one. Okay, so your T3, yeah right, your body wants about, uh, so with your taking quarter of a tablet, your body would like three quarter tablets a day, so not quite one, which is interesting because that's lower than what you're taking. In a smaller doses. Yeah. And interestingly, your progesterone, your body wants about 200 milligrams at night time, which is a lower dose. I'm not getting anything particularly good for the Sandrina estradiol. So it's just sort of saying neither particularly bad, neither particularly good. If you were able to get... Um, if you were able to get some wild yam cream, which I'm sure you can, you know, using that would be probably just a safer, more natural way of getting those hormones a bit balanced. But use it on the soft bits, the lower abdomen, the inside of the thighs. Just use it on one spot one day, one spot another day, one spot another day, and just sort of alternate it around. And the nice thing about the wild yam cream is that it balances things. So it helps to balance your estrogen or progesterone or testosterone, whatever we need. So to me, that tells me there's something about the absorption of those, either the tyramol or the uh, eutrogestin, you know. So because your body wants less than what you're taking, to me... There's either a buildup of those drugs in your system or the receptors are blocked and you're not utilising them properly, which is sort of interesting. Okay. Okay, so the first priority, just looking at your homeopathic list, the first priority is to get some of the detoxing done. And interestingly, the three that are priorities in there are the Roaccutane, the BCG and the Radiation.
Now, I don't know whether this is possible. I'm not sure what um, you've got going on with your homeopathics, but I'm just going to match it up as close as I can. So the poly radiation is showing up the 30C potency. Hmm. The BCG and poliovax is showing up MM. What's MM? These are different potencies of homeopathics. There's a roacatane showing up 12C. So just yesterday I was out to lunch with a rep and she was showing me a formula. So I'm sure there'll be some around. I'll show you what's in it in case you can get something. But this particular new product was by a company called Bioclinic and I think they're in Canada. That could be a lie. And basically uh, it's a product called G-Lymph and what it is doing is the glymphatic system that cleans our brain overnight time. So by having about eight grams, so this one's a powder, and by having about eight grams of it at night time before bed, it ha there's a specific time when we get to a specific level of sleep when it allows the nutrients to cross the blood-brain barrier and clean the glymphatic system. So our brain actually shrinks overnight when we get into a good deep sleep. And when it shrinks, it's doing this harvesting process, trying to clean out all the gump, gunk that's built up through the day. So I'll uh, so send me a message if I forget, but I'll I'll say I'll show you what's in that, and uh, if I've got an easy way of send you the details for that, then I will, because maybe you can. Uh, but I'm I'm a bit excited about it. I've had long term sleep issues, so these days I just take you know magnesium PEA and carve around melatonin before bed <laughs> pretty much every night redox molecules through the night so i do a lot for my sleep Hmm. Interesting though, the hypericum is showing up for sleep. Which is a homeopathic St. John's ward, I assume, or something in the family of that. Just want to check your center of gravity. Hold up for me. Okay. Really? No, there's nothing there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we need to do your celestial circuit. I just want to make sure you we've got your energy as up and running as possible. So and hold. They help. Hold. Yeah, second stage yeah, no. stress. No, 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 that's second stage stress. Mm. So your celestial circuit is working over time, all the time to keep that connection between your central and governing meridian in check. So let me ask, 
is this combination of meridians running backwards is it stalled it's stalled so so it's working hard to keep it up and running but it's stalled okay so we need to get your celestial circuit running yeah okay it's the masculine side that's showing up your center of gravity is out of whack and your connection between your central and governing meridian stalled Yeah, so interesting because the homeopathic detoxes that showed up, were, sorry, the homeopathics were showing up were much more about detoxification than anything else. That like it possibly means that all those toxins are binding your receptors so nutrients aren't getting in or Maybe that's blocking the, um, you know, maybe it's flipping our genes from anti-inflammatory to pro-inflammatory or something like that. Okay, center of gravity, hold. That's better. Let's check. And hold. And hold. Beautiful. Okay, so that's gone back to balance for the celestial circuit. So is it running correctly? Is it stalled? Is it going backwards? So it's running correctly now. Beautiful. Version of T4 to T3 and hold in relation to nutritional deficiencies within the thyroid and hold in relation to any uh, genetic SNPs, enzyme pathways not working and hold in relation to toxic residue. And hold. Uh, yeah, right, hold. So you're, well, you're pulling pretty hard. Yeah, but that one, you know, the rest were just rock solid. Right. But it seems to be more toxicity associated with the thyroid mm. rather than the conversion or enzymes or. Thyroid thin the throat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let me just ask a couple of questions. So, um, like herbs would be good to use with your homeopathics, Anna. So with the adrenals, you know, think all the ginsengs, you know, Korean ginseng, Siberian ginseng, withania, uh, because they're all really nourishing for that whole HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Uh, with the... Uh, and really nourishing, very, like most thyroid formulas here in Australia will have, you know, go to cola with Aeneas and really nourishing herbs in them. With the, 
like I'd really look at a really good methylated B complex, you know, because you're so tired, there's no way your mitochondria is as functional as it should be. Yeah, but yeah, we can chat and sort of see where we need to go next. But, uh, you know, the homeopathics, you know, those ones for the detoxing are the biggest priorities. And, uh, yeah, and there's a, there's a lot going on in your gut. And while that stuff is going on in your gut, everything that we're doing to feed it, you know, isn't, isn't great. And when you're tired, we want, you know, when we're tired, the last thing we want to do is um, spend a lot of time cooking and preparing everything from scratch as well. So it sort of puts us in a awkward position a lot of the time. And it's like just sort of start with, you know, start with one thing and do it slowly. But yeah, with your hidden deep survival system pattern, let's make sure that little guy's clear and whole, beautiful. And we'll check those adrenals that we started with as well. Beautiful. Did we check the gates yeah. way, way back then? So they yeah, were- Yeah, the right leg with- Okay, so we'll recheck re those and hold. That's good. And hold. And hold. And, yeah, that's pretty even now, Anna. Cool. Okay. This is a new program for this body now and in the future. The old program for this body is no longer necessary now in the future. Mm. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. Can I beat myself again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am 100% David. Don't forget, I am 100% David. <laughs> and hold out. Hold up. And hold together. Hold. Beautiful. Good stuff. Thanks, David. Oh, thank you. Okay, Anna, I'm sure we'll chat soon about that. Take care. Bye. <laughs>